Hi, it's Paris from Epic Review Guys, and today is all about spitting and DNA testing with 23andMe. A few videos back, I signed up with 23andMe to have my DNA tested. They're running a special right now for just $99. They will test out a million different spots on your DNA and then give you a report indicating which health conditions you are more prone towards having and which health conditions you don't have to worry so much about. So this is the second video in this series, basically the process of doing the kit. The first video was all about signing up, the privacy issues and so forth. If you'd like to go back and see that first, I'll put a link to it right here. They got me the kit pretty quickly in just a few days. Let's open it up and see what's inside. The box is pretty lightweight, of course it's not full of spit yet. And then on the back I noticed it's already pre-addressed and pre-postage paid, so all I have to do I assume is get my sample in the container, tape this up, and uh, drop it in the mailbox. Here's what's inside the box, the plastic case with uh, what I'm going to spit in inside of. Up at the top it does say you have to register your kit before you send this back, so they basically know who they're doing the testing for, and then they have the steps down here at the bottom. You can't have had anything to eat or drink for 30 minutes. You get the tube and the funnel, and you keep spitting until you've filled it up. Put the top on the container, put it in a bag and in the box, and then drop this in the mail. That's all there is to it. Here's what comes in the kit. Some instructions. And you would think this would be awfully simple, but I actually had to read them twice to figure out exactly how to use this. This is your collection tube, and there's a number on it facing me. That's the number I have to use in the registration that will be identified that this is my sample. And you, this is the tube you're going to fill up to this line, I guess, with spit. And um, they, it, it's so funny in the instructions, they say it takes most people two to five minutes to uh, complete their spit specimen. So it's spitting for a while. Also, it says make sure when you are checking that you filled it up to the line, don't count the bubbles. So once you've got it filled up, there's a, a funny looking thing hanging off the side here. This apparently has a, some kind of a preservative agent in it that will get mixed with your spit. So after you've filled it up to the line, well anyway, you follow the steps, one of them is that you take this, fold it over, press it down, apparently it breaks it open and that liquid will then come into this. You take the funnel and this part off, put the lid that's here onto the top, and then put it into this uh, like a biohazard type bag to send your spit to them. And they also say, sort of strangely, that you may learn information about yourself that you do not anticipate. Okay, once you obtain your genetic information, the knowledge is irrevocable. So they can't come and pull that information out of your head in case you didn't want to know it. Something else they're very clear about here in about how they may use your data. It says they may develop intellectual property including but not limited to patents, copyrights, trademarks, and or commercialized products or services directly or indirectly based on the results of this study. In such case, you will not receive any compensation. The next screen is about your sample storage, whether you want to have that stored whether so that they can get into it in the future if there are more advanced technologies or tests, or if you'd like to have those uh, advanced tests done should they develop them. It does say though that it's a maximum of 10 years. So at 10 years anyway, it's not like in some future date 100 years from now they're going to make a clone army out of you and put you into a Star Wars movie. So I finished that, all the agreeing to, and then it says, all right, get on with the spitting now. But it also comes up and they've already got a health profile survey they'd like me to start filling out. So already they want the information. But time to turn to the tube. Now I think everybody knows what spitting looks like, so um, I'll take the next two to five minutes to fill the tube up and be right back. All right, I'm embarrassed to admit it took me ten minutes to fill this up, and now that I'm looking at it, it it's too full. If you've ever had to give a urine sample at the doctor's office and you, you, you really had to go to the bathroom and you wonder, you know, how much of this do I need, and if I fill it right to the very top, are they not going to appreciate that? Well, here we are. The, the bubbles is the problem. <clears throat> it it kind of had me gagging a few times. I mean, you go around all day with a mouthful of spit, and you know, I've had kids change diapers, been thrown up on, cut open knees, had to rush them to the emergency room. Never threw up through any of that. But trying to fill this tube with spit, I'm almost gagging. It's like it makes, like even now, it's just in my mouth, it feels weird. It makes you hypersensitive to something that you take for granted, which is that slimy feel of saliva in your mouth all the time. All right, I'll show you how my tube ended up looking with the bubbles and all. If you don't like looking at what may be gross stuff, jump ahead 10-15 seconds. All right, I guess what bothers me the most, one is that 
the slide was not clear. And number two, all the bubbles. I did want to explain something too, that you're not filling this whole tube up. I don't know why, but this bottom portion, it seems like they can cut it off and actually it's just uh, empty. You can actually you know, go in from the bottom here. There's a, the, the floor of the thing is right there. So it's only about this much that you're actually filling with spit. All right, I hope you didn't come back too soon and see something you didn't want to see. The next step now is to take the top of this portion, which is considered the funnel, and I can see that there's some liquid in it, fold it over, press it down to where the little thing inside snaps through it, and then the preservative gets added to your saliva. Let's do that. It's supposed to snap, which is when it pops through, I think. There we go. Okay. Sort of like those glow sticks, you gotta break them to release the liquid so it can cause a reaction. Oh yeah, it's pouring down through the bubbles into the saliva now. And that explains why they only want you to fill it up to this line. You have to leave room for the preservative, so mine's pretty close to where I think the cap is gonna go on. Next, you unscrew the funnel, and then you use the little cap that comes in the bag to put the permanent seal on it, and you uh, shake it for five seconds. It's so close to the top, I don't wanna take this off because I don't want anything to spill over, but. Let's give it a try. Oh, bubbles. Got a little overflowage. Okay, seems to be sealed up and not leaking. So you take your little bag, you leave that pad in there. That's in case it breaks in transit, it'll help to absorb. Okay, get the air out of it. I think I'm sealed up here. Just gotta put it back in the box now. All right, I've got the tube in the bag here. There's a strip here you peel off, fold it over, and it seals shut. Okay, it is sealed up. So I'll get this in the mail today. I've heard it takes about six weeks before you start to get your results. In any case, if you're interested in this $99 DNA test from 23andMe. I'll put a link to it down below the video. And the next video I put up, I'll put a link to that here. That will be me looking at my test results and the, show you the kinds of things they can tell you. I may not show you everything though because you have to remember, once you have that knowledge, it's irrevocable. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy. And every group you guys we give stuff to try. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he decides, he watches our videos.